Welcome everyone. I'm Marga Shaw. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Flower and this is our ninth annual ADEC in Bloom. Um, somewhat different format this year for obvious reasons. Uh, we're all having to shape shift and pivot and things such as that. So uh, I would like to say before we get started that ADEC is open for business. So that's good news. And um, I'm heading over there because I need some fabrics for our little farmhouse that we're doing. So I'm excited about that. And um, I wanna introduce our early afternoon speaker, uh, Rebecca Gardner. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Rebecca is the founder and creative director of Houses and Parties, <clears throat> a full service event and interior design uh, collective in Savannah and New York City. She's been named a top event designer by Southern Living, Harper's Bazaar, and Vogue. Her work has been featured in Wall the Wall Street Journal, Architectural Digest, Milieu, Town and Country, Vogue, and Flower. And she's also in my book, Living Floral. So I'm excited to um, have you meet Rebecca and hear from her, her vision, for entertaining and um, I, I personally must say that I had been to her house, she threw a party for me and um, it was perfect. It was, it was just like fairies had come to that house and made everything perfect and whimsical and beautiful and chic and delicious and dreamy. So I hope that piques your interest to hear from Rebecca, the maestro. Um, we're gonna get started with just uh, the first slide and a couple of questions for you, Rebecca. Before you get specific about this slide, will you tell us a little bit about your personal philosophy of entertaining? Sure, sure. And I, I chose these pictures, Margot, um, to give some ideas because I think especially now, um, my clients who normally would have big parties at this time of year um, or be planning for the fall, are now calling and saying, okay, I'm having 15 people at my house outdoors for dinner. How do I make this fun? Or how do I make this different? And so that's fun for me because I'm it's like a, a dear Abby and I'm sending all these ideas. So for you, I picked out some photos that, that hopefully will inspire, but also be useful to apply um, and some secrets. Um, as far as my design philosophy, I think that things should be um, a little irreverent, very surprising, a little twisted. Um, there's nothing that I like more than like great people, bad behavior. I think it keeps things light and fun and... Um, Can we talk about me and the fainting couch at your house? <laughs> Well, the best part about that party, Margo, was I got to design a party for someone that is creative and fun and funny and smart and choose people that I know would love meeting you. And when all of um, the guests and this menagerie of interesting characters were in my living room waiting to be seated for dinner, you were nothing if not entertaining when you tripped over the chaise in front of my fireplace, which to your benefit, you could not see. Um, right. But I think it kept things very entertaining and you did it with a great sense of humor and um, let's give them something to talk about. Right, that's right. And my Diet Coke went flying. And my favorite part <laughs> was when it was over, I couldn't move and some gentleman reached his hand down out of, as if out of the sky <laughs> and pulled me up. To, to greet India Hicks, who just, I was so embarrassed and she completely put me at ease. But that chaise, I wouldn't take anything for it and it's mustard and it's tufted and it's, I think, or maybe I'm thinking about your sofa. Oh, it is, it is, I'll it never is. I'll forget, I should never forget that chaise. But anyway, talk about surprises. Um, so anyway, that was a little dangerous and a little, um, irreverent and all kinds well, of things. The best so. part is everyone was sort of stunned, Margo, and then you heard, I'm fine, I'm fine, keep talking, keep That's talking. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, you were still resting even in your prone position. I was a little bit self-conscious. I do need to break in here and mention if anyone would like to ask questions, and please do, um, go on your screen, on your Zoom screen to chat or Q&A and go ahead and submit your questions and we'll go through them at the end. So, okay, back to you, Rebecca, and this particular slide. Okay, so one of my sections of slides for tips for you is to think about a new venue. So whether you are in your library or you're in your backyard, or in this case, um, this is a 1960s gas station um, in Chelsea, downtown in New York. And um, the developer who was getting ready to raise this station and make a big fancy apartment building um, made it into an art gallery for his flock of Lalonde sheep, um, really for the winter. And so even though the weather was not perfect, we were determined to do something here. And we had a funky um, picnic and even erected a temporary fence um, on this corner. Oh, I see um, that. Yeah. yeah, so it was really fun. It was a little treasure and everyone knew that it was outside um, via the invitation, which was a wedge of brie, by the way. What? And what? so I think people, it was a wedge of fancy brie. Real brie? Yes. yes. And the man, like hand delivered? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that so much. Um, so you already knew you were going to be outside and to dress for the occasion and it was a little uh, nippy. Um, but we had plenty of heaters and another surprise is just the simplicity of the food. So we had caviar and blinis that were served on gigantic mushrooms that, um, the amazing Peter Callahan had sourced in upstate New York. We had these great baskets, which I found, um, online that were styled like Mr. McGregor's garden with mm -hmm. cheese straws and, um, tiny tomatoes and radishes all in their wilting glory. Mm -hmm. And then guests could perch on these cantha throws or, um, oriental rugs. And we had, um, stinky cheese and crusty bread and lots of champagne. So sometimes a new venue does not allow for um, something really cuisine or a huge catering moment. And that's okay, it's about fun. You know, I have found that people, oh wow. It, I think people just wanna be together. Sure. And they wanna be intrigued and entertained and um, inspired. And the food is good. If it's good, it doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter how fancy it is. Right. So we talk about that later, I think. But go ahead. Let's hear about this. Sure. Is this Forsyth Park? This is in Savannah. Um, it's a square in downtown Savannah, right off of Forsyth Park. And we had this amazing weather last year and this year too. And um, we're determined to have a picnic. And so we gathered any scrap of material that might have some color to it. Some of it's good. Some of it's horrible. Um, but it all looks good together, kind of bohemian. Mm -hmm. And um, these towers are just spray painted cupcake towers. I'd never serve a cupcake if my life depended on it. Um, but we have these cupcake towers that we covered in fruit and flowers. And again, because there was no kitchen to speak of, we served ham biscuits and fried chicken and crudite. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really about the weather and, and gathering. And I have to tell you, it was sort of fun to be in the middle of the square in tourist season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a little attention can always be, <laughs> can be fun too. Sure. Um, it's kind of like setting the scene for a play or something. And then there's your audience of tourists that come through. Right. Right, right. Um, these are details from that party. So again, it's just fruit. And this is a friend of ours, the saxophone player, who normally is quite elegant in a, a tuxedo when we hire him for parties. But we had him come in his street clothes as if he happened to be there playing this beautiful music for us. So it was um, forced serendipity, which I, I think is always effective. Um, and you know what? There's a trick to that. That fourth <laughs> right. Good job. Boppity boo. Yes. Um, 
This is another um, slide that we did for your book, which was such a joy. Um, this was at the height of camellia season in Savannah, which is really magic. And um, this, or, would you say camellia orchard? Is that right, Marco? Grove. 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 Um, was just bursting. And so we dropped our table with its gigantic ball skirt right in the middle of the grove. And what I loved was that guests had to sort of crunch through the ivy on the deadheaded camellias um, to have lunch. It was in an unexpected location around the corner from the house. And um, this was set for a luncheon during the day, which for me, and I think for most people these days, is a huge luxury to drink champagne and be with your girlfriends um, in the middle of the day. So again, this was all about the venue. Um, and I couldn't even tell you what we served because it was so unimportant. Where is this? It's in Savannah, but is it on an out island or where is that? Yeah, it's on a barrier island called Turner's Rock, which is a special place. And um, my friend lives here and I begged her to let us um, set up our lunch. She was a good sport because she too is a great entertainer. Thank you, friend. Yeah, no kidding. This is a, a dinner party that we did during winter um, in Stanford White's, uh, the architect, his famous studio space upstairs at the Chatwall Hotel. And we really wanted this to feel like home. This was for um, Marriott luxury brands. So that's like the St. Regis and the Ritz Carlton and Bulgari and luxury collection. Mm -hmm. And they were doing a press dinner and we thought it was really important that it felt like home, which is oftentimes hard to do in the city. Even the fanciest hotels can be a little too swishy to feel cozy. Mm -hmm. So this was a fun space and I collaborated with my friend and hugely um, magic artist, Emily Thompson, who I know um, we are both cheerleaders for Margot. Absolutely. And so you have a pretty tame table. We used yards and yards of Lee Jofa chintz. Um, at this time, Mario Boata had just passed away, and so I had been scouring through all of his beautiful work. Um, but we made it otherworldly and transported this elegant library to sort of a Tim Walker photograph with these clouds of quince, which surrounded the entire room and popped out of the bookcases about four feet. So when you sat down, you had this flowering blossom over your head, which was pretty magic. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that. so unexpected. It was and fun. When was this seasonally? Seasonally, it was winter. So there were a lot of poppies, Japanese ranocula. Um, it was cold outside. And so the uh, quince yeah, had quince just started. Just starting. Yeah, okay. Okay, I love that. I just think that's magical. <laughs> and I got, I've got a comment on um, the lighting. It's just, it's, do you want to talk about lighting while, since I mentioned that? Sure. I mean, I, I think that you can go on and on with decor and beautiful flowers and expensive tablecloths, etc. But the most important thing for a party is who's there. And you want to have people that are fun and equally, um, interested as interesting and that's one thing that no matter how fancy your party you really can't buy um and then your second steps i think are having a heavy pour and romantic lighting um and and those are those are really the three i think most important things we don't ever do overhead lighting and we try to avoid even for the largest weddings a bunch of stage production. Um, so we, we avoid overhead lighting like the plague and lean towards candlelight as much as we can. This is so warm and cozy and it does look like a home. And it also like, yeah, looks more like, fun and they look beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and the space, I mean, I know it's a Stanford White uh, building and then a hotel. Where is this in the hotel? It is upstairs. The, apparently, his private offices nice. were upstairs in the original Art Deco building. Nice. Okay, well, those bookcases are so warm and lustrous. I'm sure they're original. They're just beautiful. They have secrets. 
um, it, yeah. it's a good room. Yeah, I like it. Okay. My next bit of advice is to reconsider a buffet. So often when I mention buffets, people think of like their guests holding white square plates and little rolled up napkins in line for their dinner, which is horrifying. I like to encourage a cocktail <laughs> buffet where people can perch and talk and move around. Um, and this is a wild example of a cocktail buffet that we did. Um, much better than stations, you have one epic moment to decorate. Um, I think it's important to have tons of heights. Um, and this was our attempt at like um, the Garden of Earthly Delights, but in South Texas. It's like a centerpiece. You know, it's, it's like the centerpiece and the room is the table. You know, I think it's also great point. when you're entertaining at home to do a buffet because you don't want to transform your house. You want your house to look like your house, but beautiful. But you can do something wild on a on a dinner table um, for a cocktail buffet. So, okay, you've got palms. Oh, you want me to go back? Sorry. Yeah, just I'm just so you've got palm trees that you brought in, and then these tiered. Um, stands with fruit and what's what's on the left what's on that stand is this a dessert all dessert this was okay. shot after the dinner had been okay. cleared and these um pedophores were brought out um but we, it's just a weird um mass of things um my friend and collaborator trish anderson is totally twisted like i am uh -huh. and we built this with birds of paradise and bananas sticking out of lettuce and um it, we turn on the music and have fun and i think it yeah. shows there's yeah. not a bit of self-consciousness here <laughs> no i want to be at that party you know so that's great be. that's a success <laughs> i yes i could trip over the other end of that table Okay, where is this? This is um, in the Low Country. So this is in South Carolina. Mm. This was a wedding I did two springs ago. Again, this beautiful uh, Laura Ashley for Lee Jofa fabric. We used it on the tables, on the chair cushions, on the napkins. We decorated um, like a nasty pop-up tailgating tent like you would see in the Grove, but we lined it with silk shantung and put this on the outside and served cigars and champagne out of it. It was sort of <laughs> like a folly for your vices. Uh -huh. um, and then my example here is to really use all of your stuff. Everyone has a closet with stuff that they thought, oh, I'll use this for a party or this is beautiful and it was my grandmother's. I don't know if I'll ever touch it again. So for this uh, buffet in the middle of a, a dinner tent for a wedding, we just styled it to look as if dinner had been served from this. The wedding was 350 people. There's no way that you would be able to serve from a buffet. But the waiters in their white gloves and white bartender jackets walked past this. So the illusion was it was, um, you know, uh, be our guest, be our guest. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. after dinner, we played um, like pink martini, French cocktail music is a, a, a change in vibe. And all the servers came out and wheeled this off of the dance floor, which was very theatrical. And it avoided guests having to stare at a sad, empty dance floor um, during dinner. And again, it was funny. It was kind of weird. Um, and you see a little bit on the right, a, a wing of a gigantic moth that were about 10 feet in span. They hung from this gigantic tent. And that was an ode to Savannah's original founding as a silk colony. So like a moth to a flame, yeah. the groom's yeah. love for the bride, and then being, of course, on this beautiful um, property in the low country. That is- sort um, of again. So your philosophy also, not your philosophy, but your style is so, um, more is more and, and chic and fun and full of surprises. And um, this is no exception. I particularly like your idea of bringing out all your silver and all your things and using them and we can see here just they just fit right in into this elegant opulent 
tableau and you of course have the candelabra and the soup terrine or whatever i can't see what that is but um yeah. just this notion of of really using um using beautiful things and and heirlooms and um and that apparent with that you used for flowers and fruit it's just exquisite and you know so it's bring it out use it right well i think these older things especially victorian yeah. things which everyone has i think that they have to be um dramatic and in an environment of excess so that they feel theatrical and not serious mm -hmm. because if you had a pretty plain table with an apparent with fruit and flowers spilling over it i think it would feel silly um so if you just pile it on with drama um i think it feels festive and fun and happy and I love the palmetto, just sort of spiked out in the middle of everything. It's just really, this is superb. It's fun. And um, <laughs> but then with this kind of granny in a good way, leads yes. up a floral chintz. It's just brilliant. Okay. Yeah, it's almost as if that chintz could be offended if it could speak, but we don't give it a voice. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> okay. This is another sort of granny um, table that we set for Carolina Herrera. This was the first um, season that my friend Wes Gordon became their design director. And we put together this fake wedding um, with a dialogue telling the story of this beautiful, smart bride wearing Herrera that was getting married at home. And we were thinking about how weddings have become such big deals and such big productions mm -hmm. and such a symbol of status or accomplishment. And really the weddings that we had been to as we were brainstorming that were really special were small and they were about the people and they were not about how many outfits the bride changed into. So this girl- please, getting, please. Please, bride, don't change out of your wedding gown. You're never going to wear it again. You paid thousands of dollars for it. In this case, who knows? Keep it on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure, exactly. Exactly. Um, so this bride let her mother run the show. Um, a family friend baked the cake. They pulled flowers. Again, totally lacking in any pretentiousness from the garden. And this is a special day in her life because it's the day that she's marrying the person that she loves. But this bride would never say this is the most important day of her life. She's going on to accomplish things and to make things. Um, and I think that this sort of sweet, but again, beautiful and old fashioned um, table set on a rose coming chintz tablecloth. Um, looks good and again that samovar, that silver samovar yeah. is that a family piece an heirloom or i slept <laughs> that in a boat bag um on delta from okay. savannah <laughs> more than anything i'm a schlepper you yeah, know i think having good schlepper. stuff makes a difference yeah. <laughs> um then another secret, Margot, that I just wanted to share is lanyap. So it's a French um, Creole word that you hear in New Orleans if you're at Jazz Fest and you buy a bag of fried shrimp, the lanyap are the yummy little crusty pieces at the bottom. It's little extras, little sweet things. Right. And so when we're planning parties, once we get the basics down, we always say, what is the lanyap? Because we like tables to feel full. I think the excess encourages um, frivolity and fun. It's something to talk about. Lanyap can be something as simple as citrus um, from Whole Foods, as long as you make sure to have the beautiful citrus with the leaves on them. Hey, tell me something uh, about, can you go back for just a second? Sure. Um, those crackers? Yes. So I bought those from you for Christmas this year. Good. Um, all Thank different you. colors, but that reminds me now of your new e-commerce. What's going on with that? Oh, thank you for asking. Um, we are launching an e-commerce site in October, and it will be called Houses and Parties. And Houses and Parties will be an online retail destination 
for everything you need to create beautiful and memorable occasions. That, that sounded pretty good. Like I had practiced, but I didn't. I think, yeah, you've been talking <laughs> to your publicist. Come on, that's a... Yeah, no, I, I, that sounded pretty smooth, but yeah. it's the truth. And we're really excited about it. And we're going to have everything from Salawi crystal to um, felt party hats. It's going to be fun and crazy. I'm going to get a felt party hat. I can't wait. You are, you are. Um, shall I go to the next? No, tell us about this. Um, I know the lanyap or the, the oranges, but so then you have this, um, is that a Motaheta China? Yeah, this is Motaheta Sacred Bird and Butterfly, which I love. It's super yeah. punchy and I find it to be very youthful, even oh, though good. it's been around forever. Um, it's graphic and, the, and bright and it not works with it. everything. Yeah. Um, and the beautiful teal, um, blown glass finger bowls. I really didn't need those. There's a bread and butter plate right next to it, but the color is so good. You needed the I, color. I needed the color. And I got those from my friend Kate Brodsky's shop called KRB. Um, and I use them all the time for votives or ice cream sundaes, or in this case, cheese crackers, because <laughs> I needed the teal. Yeah. <laughs> Great tableau. Love it. Um, the next example of lanyap is um, summer cherries on a very romantic table on the left. Mm -hmm. And then we also took a blue shantung ribbon. I think Midori ribbon has the most beautiful ribbons. Mm -hmm. And we tied them at big bows and flopped them on the table. And again, it was excess <laughs> um, to fill the table space. Um, on the right, our lanyap were seashells. This was a party that I did in Venice on the terrace at the Gritty Palace. And um, seashells seemed apropos. And we also had tiny Venetian gondolas made I out of- I see that at the bottom. Florentine paper. Um, yeah. And the flowers here were these insane peonies. Mm -hmm. It's always hard mm -hmm for me, Margo, with flowers, because if we're traveling for parties, yeah. um, a lot of times I'm at the mercy of a local vendor. Sure. And though you would think, oh, you're in Venice, like certainly there's a fabulous florist, or you're in Paris, or you know, whatever, you're still communicating with someone that doesn't know your style, and this vendor didn't even speak English. So they came with these fabulous Murano compotes full of these tight, fat, blossoms mm -hmm. and all i could say on my translating app was make them crazy make them crazy yeah. and i frustrated him so much that he took the the peonies and spun them in his hands over the grand canal and all these peony petals were going into the water and he said right crazy this is crazy and we died laughing yeah that uh, is crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. is that fortuny on the table Ooh la la, yes. How appropriate. <laughs> Venice, I it's love really that. Is excess. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Um, this was for Christmas. The lanyap here is just simply microwave popcorn posing as snow. This is a trick I learned from my mother. She used to do this around candy houses. I and um, I saw these tacky candles. Um, when I was in Italy, and I think they're so fabulous in mass um, for holiday. I want to say that um, when you had your Christmas pop up this year, I went and I was going to buy some of those because you were selling them. And I, I waited, and he who hesitates is lost because I went back and they were sold out. You know, we so sell them carry those. Times. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll order them for you. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and then dessert should be an event. It keeps the party going. Whether you bring out a huge cake, it doesn't have to be anyone's birthday. It's something that people get excited about. Or how about a baked Alaska with sparklers? <laughs> um, this one was a little bit dangerous on the left. It was served to each guest individually when the idea was that it was to be rolled out on a, a hospitality cart. It was at the St. Regis, New York. Um, and it was fine until we smelled little, little scents of burned hair <laughs> from fancy yeah, you know, cloth. Doesn't Julia Reed say that every party should have a little danger? 
something like yes. that. Yes, your yeah. feet is my party spirit animal. Yeah. And in one of her books, she talks about a, a candle catching a floral arrangement on fire. Mm -hmm. And her lasting piece of advice is that every party should have a little bit of danger. Yeah, I which agree. We need that on needlepoint pillows. Yes, we do. What's this on the right? Oh, this I is a silly idea of um, making dessert fun and an opportunity to get up and walk around, especially mm -hmm. if you have a bigger seated dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times at my house, I serve bluebell ice cream because I'm from Texas and it's the best, sandwiches and strawberries. And I think people are thrilled. Okay, are those wrapped or not? They're, They're wrapped. wrapped. They are wrapped. So you have yeah. the wrapper at the bottom that you can hold while you eat it. Because right. those can get messy. Right. So, okay, but those so look you great. Eat fast and don't touch the sofa. Yeah, don't touch that chest. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, another idea is to add um, fabulous little flowers from the garden, just nothing pretties and fancy bonbons to a tiered tray. I'm really excited that we're going to sell these at my shop because I think that these tea trays are so useful for parties, whether they're to pass or for flowers in the centerpiece or dessert that doesn't require yet another plate and another fork. Um, and then on the right, we loved these um, totally indulgent pastries. Margot, what is the French word for those? I don't know what kind they are. I yeah. can't tell. Well, normally like, it has something to do with a breast, <laughs> but in French. Breasty, but um, I was going to say some kind of bomb, you know, okay. the shape. I don't know. I can't tell. It looks delicious. Well, we thought they were yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, and then we thought it would be more fun if this waiter wore a fox mask. Because he's, yeah, well. I don't know why. <laughs> so was he the only he waiter in a fox mask? No, all the waiters wore fox masks. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and then my, my last piece of advice is that you don't have to make it to make it happen. And this was taught to me by our friend, Eleanor Larvin, who introduced us so many years ago, Margo. Uh -huh. She's from Birmingham and you've known her a lot longer than I. And um, she has the best parties with the worst food and the most fun people. <laughs> what, the so worst food. I'm but telling her you said that. <laughs> they're a blast. She doesn't care. And that's the whole point is that it's all about the people in the end. And, and it just so happens if you make a beautiful party, um, it's your love language and that's what you have to give. And right. if you go to Eleanor's house, you know you're going to have a great time because she has the most incredible friends. And for years, she's always rolled her eyes as I'm rolling out pie crusts, or doing flowers in the kitchen while cooking on the stove. And her piece of advice is you don't have to make that to make it happen. And I think it's smart. Mm -hmm. um, it, some examples of that are this party that I was so thrilled to host um, honoring you and your book. Um, and we bought the flowers, uh, we bought orchids, potted orchids. And then at the last <laughs> minute I ran to the flower shop and bought carnations um, because years ago you and I were on a panel in Atlanta and I thought that I was very witty to ask Margot Shaw, um, flower guru and, and fancy publisher and editor and book author, what would you rather have gladiolas on your table or carnations at your table thinking that that was like the best would you rather in the world and you said to me, Rebecca, all flowers are beautiful. And so I liked putting these carnations on the table to reiterate that point. And I have these old lady, old Southern lady funeral gladiolas in honor of that comment. Right behind you. Oh, right behind you. Okay, good. Yeah. I've never um, chosen gladiolas in my life, Margot, but there they are. There they are. <laughs> I hope Tom Jane is watching them. He's the other person in America who likes gladiolas. The okay, two of you. Tell us a little bit about the lanterns and the whole theme and just all of it. Um, my grandmother had a friend named Thelma Elliott and my mother and uncle were also good friends with her. She was insanely stylish. 
And I don't remember how old I was when she died, but there was an estate sale. And all I wanted from this estate sale were these vintage, crazy colored, hand-painted lanterns. And when I was, a, I guess, a junior at Ole Miss, um, I had them all in my dining room hanging from the ceiling for decoration. And I've used them for parties a million times. I'm super careful with them. And I was thrilled to use them um, hanging really low over the table so that guests had to duck into them before they before An they sat down. An adventure. Kind of dodging. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And the light was, well, this is, this is in the afternoon, but at night they were just so warm. Again, great lighting, soft, um, flattering for women of a certain age, you know, just flattering for everybody. Yeah. It was a fun party. It was fun because you were there. And my friend Cortland Stevens from Cortland and Company made these fabulous napkins from a, a Bob Christian illustration. And um, so I loved that it was this um, chinoiserie cacophony, even um, marzipan fruit in little dishes, not because we needed the little dishes, but because we wanted the little fruit. Um, so it was good. Um, another example is just using ferns and potted flowers from a nursery. Um, I stuck some vine, jasmine vine from my yard um, at the last minute into this arrangement. This was for a wedding. And um, I felt like those, the, the bride really wanted a neutral, crisp, white, summery palette. And that is not um, in my comfort zone, but we really embraced it and made it feel totally overgrown, like a beautiful lacy jungle. And the white napkin with the white menu card sent me over the edge. So I went home with hair rollers in my hair, getting ready to, to make sure that everything started and chopped down this, um, I think it's grapevine. I'm not really sure to put on every other place setting. I love um, it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of white without that. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I learned this from you, Margo, spice pecans and cheese straws. I hate canapes when you're entertaining at home. I think they're so pretentious and difficult unless you're just having a cocktail party. Um, but before dinner, there's no need to really feed people. Um, so I guess you should tell me about <laughs> this slide. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I love how you put the cheese straws in those silver um, julep cups. They look like the pomme frites you know, that you see in French restaurants sometimes. And of course this, well, it's so Southern. I'll just say that the spice pecans and cheese straws are just so Southern and we are so known for our hospitality. And so, you know, who just keep those in your house, keep them on hand right. and, and you've got a party in your cupboard. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but again, you don't have to make it. Like why make the canapes and the dinners and the dessert and the flowers, choose the things that bring you joy. Right. Um, and then that leads me to just the, the simplest solution of all, which is fried chicken, which doesn't have to be piping hot and everyone loves it and Chinese takeout. So there's no reason not to have a party. If the tabletop is your gig, do the tabletop and order a uh, seamless. I love both of those, yeah. And you can't beat Kentucky Fried Chicken, I'm sorry. Oh, it is so damn good, it's so good. And the biscuits, everything. I think Popeyes is good too, but um, there's no need to buy chicken when you have Popeyes. So, I'm sorry, I'm hearing now that I need to go to some questions. Okay. Um, you wanna, do you, did you wanna wrap up or is this? Kind no, I'm just so honored to be a part of this, and um, it was so cool for me to be in your book, and I appreciate all the attention and in, in including me. You are worthy. You are so worthy. So listen, we're going to walk through some of these questions, if that's okay. So people want to know about Rebecca. Is that okay? Well, it's on yeah, both. No matter, please. Okay, hold on. All right, will you please share your resource for the beautiful floral tablecloths? Hmm. Um, the first photo that I showed you had a red and white twall, mm -hmm. which is GP and J Baker, I believe is what the brand is called. It's a Kravitz 
Lee Jofa line. Um, the softer floral is Laura Ashley for Lee Jofa. Mm -hmm. And the Carolina Herrera tablecloth is called Sackville. Um, and that's, that's Rose Cummings. Rose Cummings, that's right, okay. Uh, uh, what's wrong with cupcakes, asks someone. Why serve a cupcake when you can have a whole piece of cake? Okay. It's not so, my, my theme of excess. Okay, so it's not about um, style or good taste. It's just, it's, it's you know, why not go the, the full nine yards, right? It's like a mule, you know, when you buy a mule, like, why don't you just buy the whole shoe? Okay. Or a mullet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> why go halfway? Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So three parts to a party, someone asks. Three parts? I think you, I think you talked about that. Lighting, people, and heavy pour. I think yeah. she's just wanting you to re repeat that. So, so, so my, I think that um, fun, pe fun, smart, interesting people heavy pores and flattering lighting. Right. So then, um, hi Rebecca, I love your controlled wildness. Do you have any tips for amateurs to achieve that balance? Good question. Um, maybe create something beautiful within the confines of what you would think of as traditional good taste and then mess it up put some plastic bugs on it or um, put some tacky hot pink candlesticks in those candelabras. Mm -hmm. Speaking of candlesticks, I, I still love my candy cane candlesticks that I got from you this year. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, sell those again. Do you I'm ever so employ party sorry. games or any other types of icebreakers? We always have a parlor game. I love Would You Rather on the back of a menu card. Um, I think that paper masks, like the old fashioned that you tie around the back, um, are fun. When you walk in, you hand everyone a paper mask and that helps them find their um, place card, like a, a, you know, a rhyme or a riddle. Um, I love dance parties. I think if there's a dance party after dinner, you have succeeded over the moon. That's not really a parlor game, but um, I, I think that Would You Rather is an easy one and mm -hmm. can be a little naughty and fun. Mm -hmm. But the Avoid the gladiola and the carnations. I'm sorry, say that again. Avoid the gladiola um, carnation, Would You Rather, which didn't work so well with you, Margo. Yeah, I'm sorry to be non-cooperative. Okay, for the lantern party, is that inserted coral? What is that inserted coral? Oh, it's um, tree branch. Just, just um, I picked up fallen oak tree branches on a walk and spray painted them orange. Okay, genius. Okay, let's see. You've mentioned the table. All right. How do you go about pricing out different events like these? Do you go by size, or is there a price list to refer to you could recommend? Do you recommend charging by the hour for event designs? So that's three questions. How do you go about pricing out events like these? I've been doing events for so long, um, for years before I opened my own firm, which is gonna be 10 years old next May. <laughs> and we have a pretty good rhythm to price things, which is based on a percentage. And we came up with that by calculating hours like a lawyer would do of how many hours we spend on each party. And we found that the budget is um, always the same ratio to the number of hours on the party. I'm a little different than uh, typical event designers because we really make things with our hands for every single party. Um, Labor. So so labor, so, you know, having 10,000 literally luminaries in front of a dinner tent might cost $3,000 in, in materials, but it's, it's the labor that, that really um, makes a difference with those uh, details. The lanyap. Um, even if you plan, 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 what do you do when things go a bit awry? 
How do you recover and keep it going? Well, I have a psycho calm voice, kind of like this, like everything's okay. And it scares the hell out of everyone. I always have cash on hand. And we so do you plan just give cash out to your guests if things go <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. back. We'll order something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, order a pizza. Here's here's twenty dollars. Um, no, but I find that especially in the city, um, when you're you're dealing with these with these big hotels and you want something done, it helps to have um, a, a calm psycho voice and a wad of cash. But Margo, we plan like crazy people. Like we are general Patton getting ready for every single possible scenario. And we have experience with every horrific thing that you could ever think of out of our control. And we know how to fix it. Okay, so basically hire Rebecca. Um, I'm s Did you right. build the palm trees in an early slide with pineapples stacked on top to make the trunks? Oh, we found this amazing thing on Amazon. It is a pineapple core, and you wind this thing with your arm. Our, like only my right bicep looked good for a really long time because I cored those pineapples. And then we stacked the cored pineapples on an umbrella stand, like you would use outside so that it had good weight to it. And then just stuck the palms on the top. Brilliant. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Thank God for Amazon. Could you hey. discuss the details of the Brie invitation a little bit? Just how was it packaged? How did you keep it from smelling horrible or did you not care? Well, yeah, let me just go back to a pretty slide so you're not looking at a bucket of chicken. Okay, that's pretty, even though it's out of your comfort zone. Or I could do this. <laughs> Whatever you want. Um, I just saw that big chicken bucket and I didn't think that that was good. Um, so, Margo, what was the question? The Brie invitation, can you discuss a little bit, describe for us how it was packaged and... Sure, sure, sure. So we found just small rounds of Brie in those wonderful wooden boxes. And we had a label designed that looked like an old French creamery and put it on top and um, tied it with burlap. And the, the label had all the details for the party and those were hand delivered to guests. Yeah, I wish I'd gotten one. That is brilliant. I, it looks like we may have to sign off. Okay, which thank I'm you. I'm sad. What? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Thanks for all these answers too, because uh, this is a, a rare treat for people to get to really query um, such an expert in your field. And next time we wanna talk about your interior design business. So that's something to look forward to and um, hope we'll see you in a lot more titles and um, in person someday when we're out of Q-Town. Uh, thank you all for joining us today and stay tuned for Brooke and Steve Gianetti of Patina Farms. They will be on at 3 Eastern, 3 Eastern, and we'll have more fun with them. Not more fun than this, but just again, we're going to have fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to watch. Please watch everyone come back and um, we'll have some fun then and we've got more a lot more questions that we couldn't get to and i'm so sorry but um y'all stay you tuned for rebecca's e-commerce site you can dm her and your e-commerce site is houses It'll and parties .com and it launches in october can't wait we'll give that some love at flower love you rebecca thank you for bye. your time bye bye take care bye